Okay, we are going to begin this uh, public caucus. Tonight we have with us Carl Dealey, uh, business administrator, soon to be IT director, and all the other hats that he wears. And uh, Scott Shear from PFM, which is the city's financial advisor. So tonight they're here to discuss uh, with us agenda item 6A, which is uh, the city refinancing a note from 2002. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Dealey and Mr. Shear to give us a rundown on the legislation and then take any questions from council. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, Carl, I'm sorry. You have to turn that, make sure that's green, and then you just pull that towards you. There we you. go. Is that good? Yep. As long as you have the mic towards you so they can hear you on ECTV. Share the mic. Yeah, thank you, Council. It's always good to be here. And uh, yeah, we, this is a good opportunity for us, you know, as part of the, I suppose, the fiscal responsibility for the administration. Obviously, we're always looking at opportunities to take advantage of the current kind of economic outlook. And as everybody's probably aware or painfully aware, um, kind of interest rates are at an all time low right now and they look to be continuing, you know, into the foreseeable future. Um, so, what we've done, we've taken, I think, is this is our last um, kind of a variable interest loan that we had, and we obviously put it through for a refinance. And uh, I'll, I'll ask Scott to to kind of go through the details with you. Sure. Okay. If you don't mind, I have a handout. No, uh, not at all. And you can pull that. I believe you can pull that microphone and speak right into it. It might be easier. All right. Well, again, good evening. Thanks for having me. I think we have some pretty good, pretty good news for you. And, and just kind of following up on Carl's introduction, maybe if we go to page three of the handout for starters. <clears throat> so we have a couple different interest rate charts, but Carl mentioned that we're kind of near all time lows. And if you go to the bottom chart on page three, this is a municipal index. It's more of a short term. It goes back to January of 2019. So just again, a little closer view. And you can kind of see where we were on the left-hand side in early 2019 and where we are right now. You obviously see that big blip kind of in the middle. That was when the pandemic hit and the market kind of seized up for a little bit. But, you know, now we're kind of back to, to where we should be. So although we're not necessarily at the bottom, bottom of the market, we're still at a very, very low interest rates, kind of near all-time lows. So as far as the opportunity to look at fixing the interest rate on one of your outstanding pieces of debt, I think it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you're kind of doing it for budget stability, going from a variable rate to a fixed rate. You're eliminating kind of a higher administrative fee with, uh, with that loan that we're refinancing. And we're able to lock it in at something less than 2%, which we'll get into those details. So overall, I think it makes, you know, kind of makes a lot of sense uh, for us to at least consider. Uh, we were very happy with the proposal process. Um, kind of given everything that's going on here at the city. Um, you know, I think the banks view the city very favorably, which is why we got uh, these good interest rates that we're going to talk about here shortly. Uh, so that's kind of the high level overview of the transaction. We're looking to um, refinance the 2002 loan. Uh, we're near historical low interest rates and we're basically going from a variable rate to a fixed rate and achieving budget certainty going forward, but also achieving savings going forward by locking in that low, low fixed rate. So maybe if we go to the next page, which is page four. So we did receive four different responses uh, from the different lenders. M&T uh, supplied the, the best overall proposal with a fixed interest rate of a 1.71%. Uh, they have minimal amount of bank fees, $1,000. Um, and some of the conditions that they uh, put in um, uh, as far as having financials sent to them, as well as a depository relationship. Now, the city already has a depository relationship with M&T, and they said that's perfectly fine. So they don't need anything more. That's something that we checked with them back when we first received the proposal. Um, Fidelity was just a little bit behind uh, M&T with the interest rate, uh, some slightly higher fees as well. Uh, and then you see some of the other proposals that we received. So overall, I think um, you know, these banks, again, viewed the city favorably. I know Carl spent a lot of time answering questions and we were uh, kind of responding to the banks to get them you know, re-familiar with the city and comfortable with the finances. Obviously they did become comfortable because 
not only did they submit proposals, but they also submitted proposals with overall good, good features related to it. So based on the RFP process that the city conducted, you know, our recommendation would be to go forward with M&T as the lender if you did decide you want to move forward ultimately with approval of the ordinance. And then as far as kind of what that means from a budget perspective to the city, if you turn to the next page, page five, so the new loan itself up at the top in column one uh, would be about $3.2 million. Um, and in column three, you see how the savings are kind of falling into place. So we're looking at savings well north of $300,000. When we look at what was being budgeted for this loan versus what the actual fixed interest rate now is with, with the overall loan. So again, overall from an efficiency standpoint, very, very good transaction as far as the savings being produced or the, the net benefit um, for this roughly $3 million loan. So again, the savings you're gonna see fall you know, roughly in, in column three, about you know $80,000 in the first year and then starts to dwindle um, thereafter. And then the rest of this is just kind of more detail of kind of the loan itself. The next couple pages, six and seven, are the existing, um, uh, it's, it's the existing amortization schedule. So basically, if the city did not refinance the loan, pages six and seven would be what you would continue to pay. Um, and you see there the, uh, the interest rate that's budgeted of basically three and a half percent in column three, and then there's that administrative fee of about two, uh, 200 basis points or about 2% in column five. So again, going from kind of an estimated or assumed rate of you know, almost 5% down to something much lower to basically 1.71%, providing again, the budget certainty and um, uh, the overall savings related to this. And then column nine, I'm sorry, page nine is what the new loan would look like with m and uh, with their interest rate in here. So now again on page nine, the principal is being amortized in column two, the interest rate in column three, and then again, you see kind of more detail of the savings over in the far right-hand side, how that's falling, uh, falling into place. And then on page 10, uh, just kind of breaks out the sources and uses of the transaction. So we're starting with, uh, under sources, the note of about $3.2 million and change, uh, the amount required to call the note. And again, that's estimated at the moment just because it is a variable rate. So it's gonna fluctuate until the time of closing. We think, you know, we, we feel comfortable with the number we have in here, but the loan closing is scheduled for July 13th. So that rate of the current loan actually resets on a weekly basis. So there's a little bit of interest rate risk until then, but you know, again, we have some assumed uh, rates in there that, that we have in, in the calculation for the payoff. Uh, we don't expect anything to come in any higher than that. So that payoff amount should be pretty good. If anything, there might be like a little bit of cushion in there. So if there are some, uh, if the payoff amount comes in a little bit less, that's just gonna be more savings that an or to the, to the city at, at closing. Um, and then the other fees, estimated fees related, um, related to this. And then the, the next page, page 11, it just now kind of looks at everything in totality with the city's uh, debt structure. So um, page 11, again, the overall debt of the city. The columns two and three, those were the transactions issued uh, through the Redevelopment Authority in 2016. And then columns four through 10 are the other loans and bonds uh, issued in the name of the city. And so column 10 would be the new proposed um, loan with m and for this refinancing. Um, and then you can kind of see the overall debt service payments in column 13. So this would reflect the, the benefit uh, by refinancing the 2002 note with this M&T loan. And then the rest of the handout is, you know, the next page is really just a brief summary of the transaction. And then the uh, last couple pages is the actual proposal from m and And so with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that uh, that you may have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Shear. Um, in 
uh, column 11 on page column 11 on page 11. So the city's total debt service currently will be 128 million eight hundred and fifty four thousand twenty nine dollars. That yes, that's the total principal and interest that's due back over the life of the loan. Correct. Okay, got it. The number below there, one hundred one million, that's the actual principal amount, and then the interest piece is the difference between those two numbers. Okay. Um, so the interest rate uh, is one point seven one zero percent. The issuance cost is sixty five thousand, and we're going to save almost four hundred thousand over the life of the note. The in the um, in the legislation, it mentions capital projects. Are you using some of this this uh, money to finance capital projects, Mr. Dealey? And if so, could you explain what they are? I think originally, this original loan is for the, uh, the street lights. Um, yeah, sorry, originally this, was, this, this loan was taken out for the street lighting. And so at, at this point, yeah, I think this, this, this money has been spent, right? So in, in terms of that project. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? So with that being said, originally in 2002, it was taken out. For yes, that is correct. Yeah. But at this point in time, you're saying the money is, has been spent. Yes. Yeah. Um, when we're looking at, you're, you're saying that this is the last variable rate loan that the city has. Yes. On page 11, is this all of the loans right now that the city currently has out? Yep, it's all the outstanding debt, yep. Okay, with, with that. And so, uh, I mean, we're always looking at refinancing any of the other debt, but we have to kind of wait till the IRS says we're allowed to based on their call dates and whether you're able to do it taxable or tax exempt. And so we have our eyes on this, but at, at the moment, this is really the only transaction that's kind of on the table. And again, it's going from the variable rate to the fixed rate, but hopefully whether it's you know next year or the following year, there may be some other opportunities before the city to refinance as we get closer to those call dates of those other outstanding issues. Yes, that's where I was going next. So this might be a question for Mr. Dealey. When we spoke during the budget process about refinancing or remarketing these loans, I mean, it was discussed of, you know, um, using those remarketings and those refinancing to shore up the shortfalls for the year. Yes. Is this part of that shoring up of the shortfalls for the year? Yes, it is. And, and this, the, the savings that, uh, that Scott just went through, the, the around 400,000 was, was not put into the budget, right? So we did, we did put some savings in there based on the current interest rate projections across all of our loans, because that, well, for this loan, because it was variable, but this, it wasn't for this amount. So, so yeah, this is, um, yeah, this is not reflected in the current budget. This might be a little off task, but are any of these other notes coming up as of this year? Uh, PFM maybe already answered yeah, that question. Yeah, they would be, um, so the 2016 A's, uh, the, that call date is in 2024. Um, so that one we can, that was issued as taxable debt, we can refinance it as taxable debt, but we wanna get a little bit closer to that call date. So that might be a 2023 type transaction maybe. And then the 2016 notes, they're in column seven. They have a uh, May of 2024 call date as well. That one, um, we wanna wait basically till, unless federal legislation changes, if we refinance those today, uh, we'd have to issue taxable debt as opposed to tax exempt debt. Um, so that's again, something we're gonna continue to monitor. Um, you know, Hopefully we'll see maybe some movement in the city's credit rating. Maybe we might see an uptick in that and that'll kind of coincide nicely with the timing of these. And then, because obviously the better the credit rating, the lower the interest rates will be. So we're hoping kind of things come together here in a year or two that, that allows for these other transactions to happen. Okay. Um, during the budget process, we talked about these remarketings and refinancing. And I think the administration said that we, we have leeway of about $10 million or, or there's ability to save about $10 million. Is that correct? Well, in terms of refinancing? Yes. Uh, I don't recall saying $10 million, not for uh, on refinancing. Well, we talked about the, the shortfall and how much was to be. So, so I think you're talking, so if you look at that 2018 note, yeah. that we have a cash uh, reserve that pays that Yes, off. the 6.6, 6, so, yeah. So that's where that credit number sort of came from there, yeah. that you know we have that ability by refinancing that one, correct? That, correct. That's correct, yeah. I think that's what Mr. Schuster's talking yes. about there. So our ability at this point in time is only about 388,000. Yes. Okay, yeah. and nothing will, else will come up 
until these call dates start arriving. Correct. Yep. Okay. When um, when we're looking at the uh, the fees, is this the total fee scale on page ten? Yes. Yes, it is. All the fees are comparable to other transactions of this nature. Yeah, yeah, they're comparable to previous ones. Yeah. All right. That's all, President Cahan. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? I was just wondering what um, what amount have we paid up until this point on this on this loan? I'm sorry. Say that one more time. What amount have we paid uh, in total up to this point on on this loan? Uh, I didn't know. I didn't question. see that figure anywhere, so it's just uh, curious how much we've yeah, already so, paid on it. Uh, let me think here for a moment. Or I what? Can, or what this? Or what the starting? Um, yeah, I, I can loan get you total a was. detailed number, but just kind of ballparking. Um, so on average, uh, the city has paid, you know, say maybe four hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, and that's both principal and interest on that loan since 2002. So, you know, if we take the 400,000 times, you know, 20 years, 8 million, a little bit less than that, you know, maybe closer to 7 million. Okay. Um, so somewhere in that ballpark. Okay. And uh, I was just wondering on uh, pages six and, and seven, um, where you have the chart of if we continued with the, the current loan that we had, uh, the 3.5%, uh, since it's variable, is that just an average or a? Yeah, um, that's, that's an average. Um, okay. The administrative fee, that's, that's kind of set, that 2.15%. That two, 2 um, the 3.5, that's kind of like what the city has historically budgeted. So sometimes it's been higher than that. Uh, sometimes it's been, mm -hmm. it's been lower than that. Um, I would say right before uh, COVID hit, that was, you know, again, pretty close to that 350. And then it came down a little bit since then because that variable rate came down. But more than likely, we're going to see that variable rate kind of go, go back up again. Sure. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The, the other thing to point out, just you made me think about it um, mm -hmm. as I was looking at that schedule. The other thing with this loan is the, the final maturity or the amortization is not changing. So we're keeping the, the same end date. Uh, that was scheduled to pay off in 2028 and it's still scheduled to pay off in 2000. I, I did notice that, yeah. That's good to know. Okay. Anyone else? Kevin? Uh, very briefly, in, I'm looking at page nine of the, the uh, presentation that you provided us, um, and there's no administrative uh, cost uh, column. Is that because there's not going to be any administrative costs? Correct. Okay. So the only fee, the only, the only fee will be the interest rate of one point seven point one. Correct. Okay. Yep. Thanks. You're welcome. Anybody else? Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. We oh, Mark, do you have any questions? Oh, okay. We don't have any further. Uh, we do not have any further questions, and we want to thank you both for coming in. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate have your time. Have a good evening. As always. I'd like to call this public meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for the pledge? of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silent reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world, for those who have passed away in our community, and for all those suffering due to the pandemic. We also want to remember tonight Anne Marie Riggy Hopkins, a longtime city employee in the Law Department and Treasury Department who recently passed away. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster. Present. Mr. McAndrew. Present. Dr. Rothschild here. Mr. Dunhue? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. An executive session was held today at 5 p.m. regarding potential litigation. I'd like to take a moment now to read a proclamation, a joint proclamation by the mayor and city council 
of the City of Scranton in support of National Nurses Month. So pursuant to the City of Scranton's Home Rule Charter and the powers vested therein, the Mayor and City Council, the governing bodies of the City of Scranton, do hereby proclaim and declare that the City of Scranton hereby honors, recognizes, and supports the nursing profession during National Nurses Month as follows. Whereas registered nurses in the United States constitute our nation's largest healthcare profession, and whereas the depth and the breadth of the registered nursing profession fulfills various and emerging healthcare needs of the American population in a wide range of settings, and whereas the American Nurses Association, as the voice for registered nurses in this country, is working to chart a new course for a healthy nation that relies on increasing access to primary and preventative health care. And whereas a renewed emphasis on primary and preventative health care will require better utilization of all our nation's registered nursing resources. And whereas professional nursing is an indispensable component of the safety and quality of care of hospitalized patients. Whereas the demand for registered nursing services will be greater than ever because of the aging of the American population, the continuing expansion of life-sustaining technologies, and the significant growth of home health care services. And whereas here in Scranton, we will always appreciate the selfless dedication of our nurses as they strive to keep our community safe and healthy. Whereas Scranton's nursing community has answered the call of duty to care for and treat with compassion and courage our area's residents during the COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas the American Nurses Association, along with our local nurses associations, have declared May as Nurses Month with the theme, You Make a Difference, a nod to nurses, sheer numbers, their unparalleled impact during the pandemic in healthcare, and an open invitation to hashtag thank a nurse for enriching our lives and the world we live in. Now, therefore, the residents of Scranton, Pennsylvania, by and through their duly elected mayor and city council, do hereby recognize registered nurses' accomplishments and efforts to improve our health care system and show our appreciation for the community's registered nurses, not just during this month, but at every opportunity throughout the year. Thank you. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order. 3A, Minutes of the Scranton-Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority meeting held January 21st, 2021. 3B, Minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held April 21st, 2021. 3C, Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Commission meetings held March 17th and April 21st, 2021. Are there any comments on any of the third order items? if not received and filed. Do any council members have any announcements at this time? I have two I of them. Do. A quick reminder, uh, I brought up last week, St. Lucie's uh, spaghetti dinner is Thursday, this Thursday, June 3rd, it's, it's between three and six, it's a drive-through and it's $10. Um, also, um, I miss this every year and, and, and I think it's a great thing. So uh, this is the Bedrock Technology, it's the 2021 annual electronics recycling event. I know everybody has a TV laying around, a big one. Um, I forget this every year. So when is it? It's this Saturday, June 5th, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. And uh, it's going to be at 50 Alberici Drive, Jessup, PA. Okay, the cost is uh, accepting cash or check only. $20 per car, $40 per trailer, and $100 per business. So accept the materials, everything, computers, TVs, printers, um, you know, they're not accepting batteries, uh, anything containing mercury, stuff like that. All right. So like I said, this is something I think a lot of people forget. This is a good thing. That is all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Um, today is the 1st of June. So um, that's officially uh, the month of June, which is Pride Month. And I just wanted to wish the LGBTQ community a happy Pride Month. Uh, we did have the flag raising earlier today outside of City Hall. I think it's maybe the third or fourth year that we've been able to do that, which um, I'm really uh, sad that I had missed today, but I'm, I'm happy it's something that uh, that we do to make our city a more welcoming place and to help celebrate uh, Pride Month. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, yes, I have one. Um, it's only one comment, but the uh, Marywood University is having a leadership celebration to honor Jim and Kathy Gavin. Um, the celebration is going to occur Thursday, June 10th, and tickets are available on the Marywood website. Okay, thank you. Mr. Boulevard? 
Fourth order, citizens' participation. The first speaker for tonight's meeting is Joan Hodewanitz. Um, I just gave you a copy of a flyer, the Lackawanna County Library System Home Delivery Service. We used to have a books by mail program for people who were homebound or physically disabled, but we have now expanded that service that anybody can request home delivery of library books, tapes, DVDs, CDs, talking books, whatever we have. Uh, those who are interested, you, you would uh, contact the library either via the internet, www.lclshome.org, or you could call the Scranton Public Library at 570-348-3000, extension 3035. Place your order, and as soon as they get their hands on it, they will send it to you in the mail. And then all you have to do is return it to any one of the county's seven libraries. So if you can't get to the library, we'll get to you. Uh, next, uh, I've given a copy of my requests for information and questions, and here they are. First, um, the city fixed a pipe without a permit back in October. Um, I would like to uh, pursue that topic I would like to know um, how that happened. Uh, were there any internal controls in place to make sure that such a, a situation does not occur if, if they weren't in place in October, are they in place now and what are they? Uh, what's going to cost the city to replace that undersized pipe so that we don't have a flooding situation? And if flooding does occur before we replace the pipe, does the city have the funds to pay for any damages that result? Next, um, there was an article in the Times uh, about Scranton County at odds over taxes. I'm confused. I would like to know what is the status of the dispute with Lackawanna County with regard to the Tax Claim Bureau's policy on the collection of delinquent property taxes. Uh, are our residents paying more in legal fees than they did when Northeast Revenue collected those taxes? Next, as you mentioned during the caucus, I want to know the status of the 2020 audit. I've heard an anticipated completion date of September 30th. I would like to know if that's firm. And I'd also like to know if we're still paying Rainey and Rainey to do the audit prep work, which they began in 2014. It seems like it's the contract with a never ending date. Why haven't our people been trained to perform that audit prep work? They should be trained by now. Uh, next, um, there was an article in the Times, CPA firm to help county ensure compliance with fund guidelines. The county is using its auditor to make sure that they adhere to federal and state guideline, guidelines on COVID-19 funds. I want to know whether the city is taking a similar approach to make sure that we meet all guidelines, we don't find ourselves in trouble down the road. Um, those were my written questions. I was happy to see that Larry West uh, will be coming in as the new city business administrator. I wish he had been here for your caucus uh, tonight, uh, even if it's with training wheels. Um, but I think he'll do a good job, and I think Mr. Dealey will do a very good job in IT. Uh, and no one has to worry. Mr. West is a city resident because I sold him my apartment last year. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, and we'll make sure that those questions uh, get to the right departments. Thank you. Next speaker is Norma Jeffries. Good 
Good evening, Council. Norma Jeffries, Scranton resident. And I'm here tonight uh, to speak on behalf of the um, Nayog Park and the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority. And the first thing that I want to mention is that we do have a new website. And I encourage everyone to go to the website because it's filled with a lot of great information. One of the things that you can do by going to the website is that you can uh, make reservations for the different pavilions that are there. You can also, which is a very popular thing now, is to uh, of the David Winslow Treehouse. And a lot of weddings are being take, taken place there. So you can make reservations for that as well. And if you're going to um, you know, be married and you wanna be married there, and like I said, it's a very a, um, popular activity now that's going on at the park. So um, the site of our new website is naogpark.org. And Naog Park is all one word. I'll repeat that at the end just in case folks wanna get a pencil or a pen. I wanna go over the activities that I'm gonna be mentioning that are gonna be happening over the next few days. Um, on Saturday, June 5th, there is a huge craft vendor show there at the park. It's gonna be 100 vendors displaying their products, basket raffles, 50-50s, food, music, and more. Enjoy a summer day of outdoor shopping in fresh air and beauty in Nayog Park. On Sunday and Wednesday, the concerts will start at the park. The Sunday concerts start at one o'clock and um, there are different local bands from the city of Scranton that perform for us. The only thing we ask is that you bring your chair or unless you wanna sit on, on the grass with your blanket. Either way, it's a great afternoon. They usually start about one o'clock. On June 8th, they're gonna start the Wednesday evening um, concerts and they will start at six o'clock and um, the same activity, different bands from the city will be performing. And um, again, bring your chair because there's, you know, just sitting on the grass or in your seat. On June 12th, and if I can give you a flyer on this, this is our kids activity. It's a kids family chalk art and fun day at Nayok Park. Can I give this Kevin Paulson? Sure. And it's a kids' family talk park and fun day at Nayog Park. Saturday, June 12th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come out and show your art skills. And we're going to mark off different places around the pool and where people, the kids can, and their families, can um, do the chalk art. We'll be providing them with a tub of chalk that they'll take with them when they finish. We won't be sharing it. You know, everybody has their own bucket of chalk. And that begins at 10 o'clock. And there's gonna be other kids activities there as well to, um, for the kids to enjoy. So we're asking you know, that people just turn out and just enjoy the park. We don't have a pool, but we can make use of the other things that are going on at the park. Okay, that's all I have about the park. Again, the uh, website is naogpark.org. And I just encourage everyone to go out and sort of look at our new website. I'm not sure if this is the proper format for this, but I do have a question. And I was gonna send an email, but time sort of gets away from you. When you talked about last week about the resolution that you were going to put in marking signs along Gibson, I think it's up for final resolution tonight. Let me just put on my glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a 7A, and it's up for final reading and resolution. Is that the only way we can go about getting the corners marked with signs so that cars don't park so close to the, is this, so I have to put in a resolution? Is, is that the process? You can put in a request to council and we can get that to the, bless you, we can get that to the police department and then the, uh, the traffic division, will, the gentleman police officer from the traffic division will go out with the city engineer and assess the situation. They'll write a report and then they'll decide whether or not the request is warranted. Yeah, because my concern is um, on 
vine and clay, and someone's going to get a bad accident there. And um, I was told that nothing could be done, which, you know, Bill, I enjoyed that last week when you said nothing can be done. I Those kind of words just get to me, too. Right. But um, so if that's the process I need to go through is to get someone to really look at that intersection of uh, clay and uh, Vine Street before something terrible happens there. Okay. Be Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Volenberg, can you send that to the uh, traffic division of the police department? I will, Mr. Gold. Okay, thank you. Next speaker is Ron Elman. <laughs> Hello, Council. I, I would have been here last week, but I thought there'd be no place to park in a bigger crowd. So I, I was surprised to people after a year didn't show much more interest. For some of y'all, I am, I guess, the unpleasantness of council meetings. I, I don't know y'all. You know, the, the past few weeks I've been talking to, now that I'm, I'm getting out, I'm talking to people and I surmise that the general attitude of, of people, you know, I, at the grocery store and the dollar store, and they don't have any confidence in this administration, especially the three commissioners, county commissioners. I, I heard so many adverse remarks. I heard things I didn't even know about politically. Maybe this new uh, business manager will turn things around, but I don't know about pouring wine into an old glass. I, I've always wondered and I've talked about it right here before. Every election, people come out of the woodwork you never heard of. All five of y'all never attended meetings. The zoning board wrote letters. I just don't understand why all of a sudden you and others want to represent us. Look at some of these people out here been coming for years. The first time I came was in 1980 with Jimmy Clee. I probably, I probably have more hours sitting in this room than all five of you put together the last couple of years. It's because I love this city. I live here by choice. Five, six years ago when I was in Memphis playing golf, one of my friends said, come back home and I'll give you a gravy job, you know. And I'm here because I want to be here in this city. But the... The city just, has anybody ever tried to phone one of the departments in this city? You don't get them. You don't, it's impossible. Try to phone the licensing bureau. And it, they won't phone you back if you plead on the phone, offer them a bribe. That's how everything is around here. There's people who have jobs that ought to be fired. North Main Avenue is, is well, North Side is terrible. There's abandoned trailer for, for months on the 2400 block. Cars on the sidewalk, abandoned cars, tractor trailers parked. Nobody sees it. That's what diminishes our house values. It, my, I've talked to people, you, you want to reassess this. How, I haven't found one person whose house hasn't gone up two, three, four times since 1965 or 68. That's a fallacy. We all know the reassessment is to increase taxes. There's no other reason. All this nonsense that I've, you know, been shoved down our throats. You, you don't need any reassessment right now. How are we going to pay for $15, $20 million at the end of the time? Plus the lawsuit we'll lose to the out-of-town attorneys. 
you people, you're, not a one of you are thinking about 10 or 20 years from now. Look at the school board, the mess, the buildings, and what happened two years ago. Y'all gave $3 billion a grant for the city to Lackawanna College to repair buildings that aren't even on the payroll. That's what goes on. That lavish, overgrown dollar store got $90,000 grant from you when people in this city were begging for, for loans to stay open. It's just mismanagement every place you turn to. I hate for y'all to, to start out being mad at me, but this is what I hear. This is what I'm told. I didn't make it up. Thank you, Mr. Elmer. Thank you. Thank you. David Dobson. Good evening, Council. You can hear me with my mask on. I'm still protesting the uh, amount of people that seem to have vaccines available and they don't want to take them. They don't show up for the second visit. And once again, I'll reiterate, and I'm not crying, I'm still alive, but being on a ventilator isn't a very good experience and you're potentially exposing people to a serious disease. We had a, about a thousand people in the medical profession died as a result of COVID that they caught from their patients or possibly out in the world. And uh, I'd like to see a, uh, 95% vaccination rate pushed more than a 70%. I hope we're not getting in front of the uh, cart or behind the cart, <laughs> putting the cart in front of the horse because uh, believe me, it's uh, people are waking up after 20 days. They don't recognize their who they're married to. They don't know how to walk. Uh, maybe Dr. Ross Child has some experience with that, uh, retraining people how to take their first steps at 70 or 75 years old. So uh, it's really just a little pinch in the arm and uh, it might be uncomfortable for a day, but eh, even if you have some whiskey around, you can pop a couple and forget about it. <laughs> Or that was my old solution. I can no longer tolerate alcohol, not because uh, I had a problem with it, but just because of my health situation. And uh, once again, uh, call Congress on the John Lewis and For the People Act at 202-224-3121. And 202-225-3121. On one of these numbers, you can ask for a specific senator. So if you think that somebody's out of line by not eliminating the filibuster, which is a serious problem, uh, personally, I think that any state that would deny voting rights should have to refund your taxes for the last five years along with punitive damage. That's what we should write into the Constitution, not this nonsense where any old, uh, any old uh, uh, voting, uh, the way they handle the votes is just A-OK. -okay. Uh, and if they took your picture when you took your ballot, I mean, you know, how many, You'd have facial recognition and everything else, so it would be absolutely secure. That's the way it's done in a hospital, so you can't hand somebody your uh, your cards and have them pull a fake, uh, get some service, medical services for nothing or whatever. Uh, that's, and uh, well, 
once again, we have a problem with uh, guns, and uh, I don't really have a have a solution for it. With I would recommend that uh, licensing be required for semi-automatic rifles with large magazines, and it could possibly even reduce the amount of magazines unless you want to register it and license it, because then ultimately they would only have a few rounds with them. But I, I think a lot of people are just going crazy over the last year, and poor people uh, live in the, the minute. They don't see the future. They don't feel they don't have a future, and a lot of times uh, kids are just, younger people are just, uh, they're, they're uh, impulsive. They, they think things matter that really don't, and they go out and do something like uh, what happened last night or the night before or whatever. But uh, I'm a strong Second Amendment person, but you can't tell who is going to commit a crime with a gun anyway. Two-thirds of them are licensable or uh, pass the background test anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, and have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner. Uh, Council McGon, you mentioned about the speakers. I got home from the meeting last week, and I watched a normal show. We put our TV in about 40. My wife said she had to put up to 100 to hear me. So I don't know what the problem was. Yeah, that I think that's more internal with uh, the cable channel. Yeah. I because I we've talked about that before. I don't think that has anything to do with the speakers, but I do get that complaint a lot from people. Yeah. So I know what you're talking about. And uh, you also spoke about the splash pad. I go by there pretty often. I was just by there the other day. And to me, it looks like it's almost ready. I, I don't know how much more they have to do. It looks pretty good. Uh, next thing, I spoke about this a long time ago. The utilities are killing our streets. I live on Bulwer Street. That was just paved about two, three years ago. A couple months ago, the gas company was there. They dug up two different areas, filled it in. Now those, the one area is starting to sink. They just don't do a good job re redoing what they did. And, uh, and it's like Main Avenue from like Rite Aid to uh, I think it's Jackson Street. They dug up the whole, the whole length of those three, four blocks, whatever it is, and I think they're still doing it. I, and that Main Avenue was paid not that many years ago. So I hope they're required to repave all those blocks that they dug up because it, it goes all the whole length of I'm sure you, you guys probably go up and down Main Avenue. It's terrible. I, they shouldn't be able to get away with this. Uh, all right, last week I spoke about the bridge on Main Avenue again with the trucks getting uh, getting stuck under there. I, uh, from time to time, I, I go under there many times a day usually. And uh, it, I just think about it, when the bridge, trucks hit those bridge, that bridge, are they, is the structural integrity of bridge being compromised? And uh, if you look at the steel beams on each side, they're rusted. I don't know how old that bridge is. They're rusted. There's holes in the beams. That, that can't be safe. I don't know if that bridge is ever inspected by the railroad. I know it's a railroad responsibility. But uh, every time I go under that bridge, I, see, I, I just think about it. How safe is that? Would a train going over weighs how many thousands of tons? Oh, I, I just don't know how safe it is. I don't know what railroad owns it. But. We, we can check that out. Mr. Yeah. Boldenberg, can you follow up on that? How like, yes, I will. When, Thank you. when the last time was it got inspected? Mm -hmm. Holes and steel beams, that doesn't seem safe to me. <laughs> no. Uh, what else do I have? Oh, okay. It was Memorial Day yesterday, and already the fireworks are starting. My area, I could see right out my bedroom window. It's, I'm not sure. I think it's coming from the Trip Park development, the new development. It, it's ridiculous. Now, the 4th of July, it's ridiculous. 
Last night it was 11 o'clock at night. They were still doing it. And I can't believe the neighbors there put up with it. If that was me, my neighbor was shooting them off now. It's, and it's, it's illegal. You have to, in a city, you have to be 100 feet away from a residence. And there's no houses in that area that are 100 feet away. So maybe when somebody's house catches on fire, maybe they'll do something about it. It's ridiculous. And on the 4th of July, I don't look forward to the 4th of July. You know, what else? Okay, uh, Councilman Donahue, I brought up the Bulwer Street sign last week. Did you talk to the yeah, DPW? Yeah, so I did pass that on. They said they'd be out to take care of that. Okay, yeah, because it's been a week now. Yeah. So it's still out there. There, there is only two guys, you know, two or three guys that go out and do that, and they so it's on their list. And Okay. Uh, and uh, last week, I heard the news that the La Festa Italiana is going to be held this year. I, I let out the biggest yell I ever let out. <laughs> I, that's one of my favorite times of the year. I love that. And it's good for the whole area. It's good for the city. So I'm thrilled that they're going to have that this year. And, oh, Dave mentioned guns. And that's... Again, in Miami, another mass shooting over the weekend. Nothing's going to be done unless the Republicans are voted out of office. They're the ones against it because they're afraid of the NRA. The NRA lines their pockets. We got to get the Republicans out of office next election. That's the only way we're going to get gun control and stop these senseless killings. Thank you. Next speaker is Tom Coyne. Greetings, Council. First, I'd like to draw the attention that the City Council webpage is still reflecting, even at this time, that all submissions are to go to Lori Reed and Lori Reed's email address. Uh, that should have been updated quite a while ago. It's not something that's actually embedded in it, it's just a text on your webpage. Both Council pages still reflect Lori Reed's email address for submissions. That needs to be addressed. When a new proposal comes before this body, which the Gun Association came before this body, there were questions brought up even by council here of where did it come from? Where did it originate from? When a new proposal comes before this body, it should be brought up and introduced by the person who actually writes that requested ordinance or that change. The reason for this, as I've dealt with with the Maryland legislature, is when laws are being put onto the book, books, there is a judicial responsibility to be able to go back to legislative intent. Devoid of someone coming in before the council and explaining why a bill or an ordinance should be adopted, the reasons for it, and for council the opportunity to ask why this rather than something else. That has always been done in Senates to give an idea to the body of what the actual legislation, the meat is about in it. That is devoid in here. They, it comes forward as something to vote on. No one knows who sponsors it. And there's no legislative intent if there is a conflict to go back to and say, this is what it actually addressed, it did not mean to address something different. I was just shocked when I came up here before this body when laws were being passed and there was no discussion of why it was being introduced in the first place by people putting it forward. Sitting, the city parking app, it might be interesting to put forward because there are a number of places in Center City that have a limited time span. Uh, in Philadelphia, as an example, and in Baltimore, you can be on the two-hour period for four, going from four to six hours. They charge double the amount, and beyond six to eight hours, they actually charge quadruple. That would solve, pull in a little bit more revenue. It would also solve the issue of people at the courthouse 
who need to be there for four or six hours who don't want to run out and have to move their car while they're waiting to be called, pulled up before a judge, the ability to re-up on the app for just an extra fee. I've talked before about the uh, taxes and garbage tax. As was brought up between the county and the city, there is an issue now, there is issues involving what should be paid, what shouldn't be paid. I don't understand why the city of Scranton cannot handle its own financial footing. Why we do not have competent people in the city who can audit, who can collect, who can process, and who can bill that we have to farm it out to someone else. That's incomprehensible that your job is the budget that you hand on budget and collections, yet it gets handed off to another political entity outside of your direct control. I also submitted on um, 16 months ago, a request for a parking space for the press, as well as a change in the ordinance allowing for press to park during the um, press to park at meter parking spaces. This was on January 14th, 2020. The benefit of this was put has shown that in research, I brought forward to you the trash collection fee, the, the, the $100,000 from Denaple towards equipment, health and safety that somehow disappeared. Through my research, I pulled all of that paperwork up and correct and brought it forward when most of this body was unaware that there was even an agreement to supply equipment to the city of Scranton. Press requires time to do research. And that's why I had requested it between somewhere between the school board and the county courthouse. And I know that you, Mr. Gone, you were going to bring it forward to the parking authority and it probably got lost somewhere in between with the pandemic. But I did bring it forward using the Article 5 Rules of Council Section 19. Thank which you. sends it to the directly to Mr. McCandrew's responsibility as public safety. And I'd like to know in fifth order, what happened to that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is John White. Hi. I'm John White, uh, Historic Hill. Um, hope all your families are safe and well. Um, um, uh, I've been writing to you the uh, past few weeks, uh, so everything I'm saying tonight I probably wrote uh, to you. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the utility companies are, are making cuts in the road uh, kicking up dust um, everywhere. Um, I, I'm in the 500 of Wheeler, but I'm sure it's going on everywhere. Um, uh, and they don't clean up. They don't uh, take care of business at the end of the day. And so our houses, our cars, our lungs are getting filled with toxic dust from the roads. And... Um, uh, the landfill trucks uh, use Wheeler Ave, I guess, to go from Dunmore to somewhere, uh, and they speed, and um, they speed, and that's not enforced uh, at all that I that I can see. Um, uh, I, I understand uh, with the cutting that that there's an ordinance that. Uh, says when this kind of thing is going on, the cutting, that uh, the utility companies uh, have to clean up every day. Uh, they're not doing that. Uh, neighbors are out hosing the road down, sweeping, all that other stuff. Uh, I invited you to come up and look, uh, smell our not so fresh air. Um, <clears throat> 
uh, I made suggestions too uh, 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 for what may help, um, and I'll just run off a few. Uh, uh, why not have the fire department come up every day and just hose it down? Uh, they have big power hoses. You wouldn't even have to have the neighbors move their cars. Just hose on under it. Um, I suggested maybe uh, uh, working with the University of Scranton or other nonprofits. We, the city, do a lot for them. Uh, if you've ever gone on the uh, campus of the university, it's beautiful. Their groundskeeper, I worked there for 25 years. Uh, their groundskeepers are outstanding. They could, they could help out. Um, uh, the landfill owner um, who, whose trucks are burying down, uh, perhaps he could help out. It, it's got to be done every day in order for us to breathe easier. We have children uh, breathing it in, asthma. We have old people with COPD, uh, pick a lung disease, we got it. Uh, they're breathing it in. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty nasty. I, I think it is. I mean, I, I'm sure you have bigger fish to fry too. And I mean, you're doing, you're doing good stuff. I don't want to leave that out. You're doing good stuff behind the scenes a lot. I know that. Um, but this is, this is personal at this point. Um, uh, I, I have this fantasy that at some point in, 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 in the future that there's going to be a headline in the Scranton Times that says Scranton has been voted one of the cleanest cities in the country. We're not there. Uh, got a ways to go. Um, I, I must be leaving something out. Uh, you, you could remind me if you want to. Um, it's a great neighborhood. We're friendly. We shovel each other's sidewalks uh, in the summer. In the winter, we cut each other's lawns. Um, in, in, the, in the summer, it's a great neighborhood. It's safe. Uh, we want it to be clean. We want it to be one of the cleanest cities in the country. I, I had two, two things. I'm going to move on. Um, I'll let that rest for now. Uh, but the other thing is, uh, and, and more reason, well, it's always been there, uh, the fireworks in the hill. Midnight. We're, I'm not talking little bitty fireworks. I'm talking cherry bombs. I'm talking big boomers in the sky. Uh, kids are hiding under their beds. Dogs are hiding under their beds. Mr. Wade, I don't want to interrupt you, but you're... I'm sorry? I don't want to interrupt you in, in, your, in your train of thought, but your time was up. The five, you have five minutes to speak. I, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Oh, I'm sorry. Your time... I was talking. You're talking. Okay. No, me over here. Sorry. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt you in the middle of your thought, but your time was up. You have five minutes to, uh, to speak. Noise in the hill. Okay. Could I say one more thing? No, I will. And then if I let you say one more, yeah. So I, we appreciate your comments though. And Mr. Voldenberg, we did send his comments to uh, the appropriate departments when they came in, correct? Yes, we did, Mr. Gone, including five or 500 block of stiff court also, Mr. White. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Th thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Would anyone else like to address council? Uh, Marie Schumacher. Uh, I'd like to say first, it was nice to see three of you, uh, two of you with your children at the uh, dedication of the VFW's Vets Park at, uh, at down in front of the high school yesterday. But now on to city business. Uh, do you, could you tell me uh, tonight what Mr. Dealey's uh, ex, uh, experiences in managing an IT department 
and I would also like to know how many members are actually employed in the department now uh, versus their budget. Uh, and I would like to know whether the contract that was given to that, I think that company in, in uh, Jessup is going to be terminated and done in-house now. And um, Oh, and, and just the fact that something needs to be done soon. I mean, I spent hours last night. Well, I mean, that's an exaggeration, but I spent at least an hour off and on trying to get in on the website. You get the web page, and then you try to get something, and you get a message, something. I had it written down, but uh, in my haste, I left the, I grabbed the wrong paper. But I, it was something like, so there's been a critical error, and then you start all over, and you just keep going through it, and then you think, well, maybe it's something in here, and, and you just waste a lot of time. What I wanted to go to was to see the contract that we have with, I believe it's Portnoff, to do the uh, collection of the last five years of delinquent taxes. I think it should be about time to uh, get a report from those people if I'm not mistaken, but it's hard to know when you can't get to the contract. So something's got to be done and got to be done soon to get that department and to get that. And why we didn't keep the existing, what was the existing thing going, system going until this one was perfected, I will never, ever know. But it's very frustrating. Uh, next, 5B. Uh, I think that this should be held until you and the administration decide what you're going to do with this building. That's going to be a big cost of that uh, LED lighting and probably the most expensive part of it. So, you know, it, I think March 18th, uh, uh, the the notification of what or the receipt of the count of the uh, an analysis of what it would take, I believe it was $10.7 million, was received. And here we are, nothing. We're, we're doing a, a patch on one of the, I don't know, south towers or whatever. We've done a little bit. But if you're going to keep it, we need to know that, and we need to know where the money's going to come from. I know that's in for a grant. Uh, I don't know how long that grant is active or when it ex that time expires. But... Assuming you would want to sell this, uh, it might be for historical purposes and they might not want LED lights in here. And then you'd have to go back. So I think until you people, after this two years worth of knowing what it's gonna cost, uh, it should be put off. I appreciate that we need savings, but I don't think we need to spend a lot of money on this building if we're not gonna be here in even five years. And then, moving on. Uh, oh, also, last week you spoke of inviting uh, Chamber of Commerce President Mr. Durkin to the, I believe, the meeting on the 8th, which will be next week. Did that get put in concrete? Mr. Volnerberg, are they coming next week? Not next week, Mr. Gone. Okay. So we're, we're scheduling them, though, correct? In, the in next? June, we are. In June. Okay. We don't have a date yet, but they will be coming at some point in June. And I'll announce that the week before. Okay, um, that would be nice. And then I ask about the final report of HRG that was the worst written contract, one of the worst I've seen. Uh, yeah, I sent an email to uh, Don King, the city planner. Uh, he didn't get back to me, I just, just He didn't it. get back, so that's what I wonder what, if anybody followed up on that. Yep. And um, As soon as I get something, I'll, I'll report it out. Okay, we need to yeah, get moving on that. And then, uh, oh, that's mine. Uh, the uh, fourth order. I do. I know there are. So, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm out of time. You hit the zeros. Pardon? <laughs> I said you hit the zeros. I did. I just looked up and saw that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schumacher. Would anyone else like to address council? Okay, Mr. Volenberg. Fifth order, 5A motions. Councilman Schuster, any motions or comments tonight? No, nothing at this time. Thank you. Councilman McAndrew, any motions or comments? 
Yeah, I, I have a couple. So about two weeks ago, there was a concern brought to me via email, and then I was un unable to find it. So, and uh, Mr. Voldenberg, we were looking for it. So we actually, this gentleman actually reached out to us again. So his concerns are a property on 622 South Irving Avenue. Properties in disrepair. Um, th there's a lot of issues with garbage and, and, and all sorts of stuff that uh, needs to be addressed. So now that we have the address, we found the email. Could you please uh, send some correspondence to the code enforcement office on this one? I will, Mr. McAndrew. Thank you. And also, secondly, uh, Mr. Coyne, uh, I apologize. I, rem I do remember you bringing forth a parking spot between here and the administration building for the school district. I thought it was reasonable and I thought it was a great idea. I know we did send correspondence. Uh, um, maybe we'll have to double check to, you know, to the entities that would have to approve this. So Mr. Voldenberg, if you would please do that. I'm not sure who, who to start with, but I think last time we just sent it to uh, the administration, but um, it's a parking spot for the press somewhere between here and, and the school district. And then thirdly, so I got, I brought this up in caucus and I have to pull it up on my phone because that's how I got this. Okay, so in caucus, uh, I brought up that these pods and, and, and I'm not sure, and in caucus we kind of said, well, maybe, maybe we have to clarify it, but <clears throat> there are two pods that have been parked in West Scranton, <clears throat> excuse me, one for six months, one for a year. They're not in a driveway, they're a pod. And a pod, my understanding is, you see them on TV, if you're gonna move, you fill it up with your stuff, and then they come and pick up the pod and take it to your new residence. So, and these are parked on the street. Um, you know, the neighbors are sick of it, I, I, I get it. It's, I have six months, a year, that's ridiculous. So I know there's issues with, with um, snow removal, trying to get around them, Gar you know, garbage pickup, trying to get around them, and just living there and trying to get around them it must be horrible. So I know that um, it's unclear. I guess, you know, they've called City Hall, uh, these concerned residents. They've called the police department, and, and this person was informed, we'd love to do something, but there's nothing on the books. So briefly in caucus, you said, well, maybe it might be on the books. Maybe it might have been brought up before. Maybe it could be related as a dumpster versus pod. I don't know. But I would like to make a motion right now that, that we find out and clarify so everybody is on the same page. The resident, the owner of the pod, whoever is renting it, and the police department to be able to enforce what they probably want to do and just, you know, um, are following what, what they're supposed to do. So uh, I make a motion to to actually clarify, or, or if not, put an ordinance in if we don't have, we already have one. There's been a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Motion and a second on the question. On the question, I do know, and uh, Solicitor Hayes, if you could look it up, but I know the council voted in the past on an ordinance for the regulation of storage containers. There was a fee schedule. Um, I just haven't looked at it in a while, but I do know that we have one because I do remember that um, there was some controversy involved with that as well, from if my memory serves me correctly. So if you could look that up. I'll look it up, no problem. Anyone else on the question? Well, on the, on the question, if there's something there, that's great. Let's just. Let's just polish it up or clarify and, and uh, move forward with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and the motion passes. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Rothschild, any motions or comments? Uh, yes, I have uh, two complaints from citizens that I wanted to have uh, forwarded along to the appropriate departments. Uh, the first one, I believe I sent to uh, Mr. Goldenberg. I just wanted to ensure that you had uh, received it and that it'll be sent over to LIPS. Uh, and that's regarding the 700 block of Saginaw Street. There's an empty vacant lot that, um, that's been being used as a dumping ground and has overgrown grass. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we can get an inspector out to take a look at that property. And... The other one uh, that I ha that I received uh, just recently is uh, on Myrtle Street, the 1300 block. Uh, this one would be for SPD, I believe. And uh, there is a basketball hoop that's out on the street and children have been playing basketball in the street uh, pretty often and, and at all hours. And it's a, a big safety concern. Uh, I would love for there to be more basketball courts and appropriate places for uh, 
for kids to play around uh, in our neighborhoods, but uh, the street is is not one of them. So uh, we need to um, get that get that corrected uh, so that no one gets injured. And uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dunahue. Any motions or comments? I have nothing at this time. Thank you. I have a few things. Uh, first, just to address Ms. Schumacher's que uh, questions about Mr. Dealey's experience, this is probably something that will be discussed next week because we'll have those, we should have those two appointments, Mr. Dealey uh, to be appointed as the IT director and then Mr. West to be appointed as the business administrator on the agenda, and I think next week. So uh, what we've requested in the past is a resume to come along with that. So that'll be in the uh, public record hopefully next week. Um, as for the questions on the website, uh, I, I experienced the same thing with the critical error. So Mr. Voldenberg, if you can just double check with the IT department and find out what's, what's going on there. Uh, I heard a complaint from someone else on that as well. Uh, Mr. Coyne brought up a few things. The, the first thing, Mr. Coyne, regarding the, you know, where the legislation originates from, um, I agree with you. When I, when I took over as president of council, one of the things that I instituted, and it took a little bit of time, was if you look in the backup of the legislation, there's now a fact sheet. Um, and the fact sheet has a couple of what I thought were really important and pertinent questions. And the first one is, what department is this legislation originating from? Where did the initiative for this legislation originate? So that is in there. And um, if you look in the backup tonight, you'll see that they do answer now answer that questions. But I do think that, that that's a good point. And I uh, have wanted to see that. And, and the administration has uh, complied with that request. And then there's some other important questions that you'll, you'll note in that fact sheet. Summary and facts. What does the legislation do? What are the, the upside, the downside? Uh, how are you paying for this? Why should we unanimously support this legislation? Um, sometimes in the past, since I've been on council, those questions were answered within the backup, but a lot of times they really weren't. And then we would have to, you know, ask those questions, which I just thought was silly because uh, we kept going back and forth. So now that that is included in there. That was a good point. Um, as for the your point about bringing the collection in house. I, I did bring this up when we were voting on the Portnoff contract because it does make sense. You would think, why can't we just do it in-house instead of continuing to farm it out? And Mr. D when, I did a when I asked that question to Mr. Dealey, he said they were going to do an analysis of um, what that looks like, what that would cost, because we would probably have to add employees. How many, I don't know. So I'll follow up with him on that. But when I did speak with him, he said that that would be the goal for the future. Instead of having to constantly go with a Portnoff and these other companies, why can't we just do it in-house? It would save a lot of headaches. So we'll follow up on that. A um, few other things in the caucus tonight, we did talk about the sound system for anyone who was here. So Mr. Voldenberg is gonna reach out to a gentleman who takes care of the sound in, in, the, uh, in the chambers to see how much it would cost to relocate those speakers you'll notice that if you're at the podium, it sometimes is difficult to hear us. It sounds like it's coming from the back. So that's one of the things that I would like to take care of uh, before the end of the year. So Mr. Voldenberg will update us on that. The second thing that I wanted to mention, last week I had asked Mr. Voldenberg to reach out to Brooke Newhart, the city's parks and recreation director on the pools and when the pools would be open and which ones would be open. So she did respond that they're planning on having pools open for June 19th and they're doing regular maintenance on Connell and Weston Park. She stated that Weston Field needs more maintenance with DPW uh, putting something out to bid. So I did ask in the caucus, Mr. Voldenberg, reach out again just for further clarification on what work has to be done and, and what was bid out. Um, we are working on getting a letter. Uh, the letter's drafted. We're just going to uh, send it out you know, tomorrow to DEP. Uh, Senators Casey, Senator Flynn, and others about the issues that I mentioned last week on Leggett and Leech Creek. One of the things that I did not mention last week, and I think Ms. Hodawanitz brought up, was the article in the Scranton Times on May 16th, uh, 2021. And that article stated that the DEP was investigating whether the city repaired the underground pipe of Leech Creek in North Scranton uh, last fall without a required permit from DEP. I was told by Mr. Preambo, the DPW director, that 
they, they didn't apply for a permit then, but they applied afterwards. And there's a dispute going on there about whether, you know, the, I think the DPW says that the pipe is big enough. DEP, I don't know where, but, and this is the clarification I want. They state that the pipe appears undersized for the creek channel flowing into it. So we want clarification on in their analysis and when they went out there, is it actually uh, undersized? They also stated that, Colleen Connolly stated that the waterway opening is significantly decreased and has the potential to cause backwater and possible flooding upstream. Uh, she also stated that the DEP inspection determined that the piping installed by the city was not large enough for the water flow. So the clarification would be, you know, is the pipe undersized or isn't it? And then what was the follow-up on that? I also asked for a report from the DPW on what work has been done in the past on Leggett's Creek and Leech Creek, and then what they do plan on doing for the future. There were several meetings held out there with city officials and with a uh, gentleman from DEP. So we'll provide an update on that uh, as soon as we get it. I also mentioned in, mentioned in terms of Ms. Hodawanis' question about the audit, uh, Mr. Dealey responded that Tom Rainey was in last week working on the audit prep and, and he's gonna reach out to him and Kohansky and try to tie down a specific date. I think that probably answers your question as to whether or not Rainey and Rainey is still operating in the BA's office for audit prep. I believe they are. Um, but I will try to get your question answers as to why that is still taking place. Because I do remember a few years ago that they were only supposed to be in there for a specific amount of time. The employees would get trained and then um, they would know their services would no longer be needed. So we'll, we'll follow up on that. Also, uh, Ms. Schumacher asked about the HRG stormwater study. And as I stated to you, we did ask for an update on that. So when we get it, uh, we'll forward that along as well. And the last thing I'll mention is the, uh, there is gonna be a meeting held this week, an, an update, a stakeholder meeting or briefing on the design of the bridge replacements on East Parker and Elm Street, North Main Ave over Leggett's Creek, West Lackawanna Ave over no, the uh, Southern Norfolk Southern Railroad. Uh, so Mr. Dunahue and uh, Mr. Voldenberg are going to be attending that, and they'll give us an update afterward. And that's all I have this week. Thank you. 5B for introduction, a resolution authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a contract between the city of Scranton and Commonwealth Energy Group, LLC, to install retrofit LED lighting. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? On the question, a few things with this one. So we're gonna introduce this tonight and then we'll ask for further information on one of the disclosures that is listed in the uh, backup. If you notice, it's on page 45, I believe. The CEO of this company is a gentleman by the name of Lewis T. Evans. Um, in the disclosure, he states that uh, the ca one campaign contribution was given to Bill Courtright in 2017. Um, I'm just trying to pull it up here. So the disclosure is, uh, the, it gives you a list of municipal officials and then one of the questions is, since January 1st, 2015, has the contractor, officer, director, executive level employee, or owner of at least 5% of the company made any contribution to a municipal official or candidate for a municipal office in the city of Scranton? If yes, please identify the recipient, the amount, and the date of the contribution. Mr. Evans responded uh, that he gave a contribution to Mayor William Courtright, $1,000 on December 29th, 2017. Uh, this raised a red flag for me because I do remember the reporting in the Scranton Times that Mr. Evans had given much more than that. Um, so I went back and looked in the the archives and there was an article from February 24th, 2019 that stated uh, since January 1st, 2013, Mr. Evans gave uh, former Mayor Courtright $11,600 and that... Um, a November 4th, 2017 article that stated Lewis Evans, Chief Executive Officer of Commonwealth Energy Corps, gave $2,000 in 2017. So I want to make sure that the information that he provided, which I don't believe is correct, um, according to the reporting, that he fixed this uh, and actually put down whatever the correct amount is before we approve it. So we'll let it ride this week and introduce it, um, but I do want to make sure that that information 
is cleaned up before final passage. The other thing I wanted to mention in terms of Ms. Schumacher's comments were, well, what's going to be done with, with this building? I think in, to answer your question, in all reality, no, I'm not, I can't speak for the administration, but I cannot foresee a scenario where we move out of this building. I just think it would, there's just too many variables. It would just be too much. And then who's going to move in? This was, a, as you know, this was an issue that was addressed under Mayor Evans, former Mayor Evans, they were looking at a bunch of different options. And then I think what they settled on at the time was that we were going to stay here um, and try to rehab the building. Because as we know from the report, there has to be a lot of work done. In speaking with the mayor in the last few months on this issue, um, when the city was awarded the ARP funding, that may be a potential source of funds to use towards improving the building and the maintenance issues. The other thing, as you know, is the city applied for a, a RACB grant through the state um, and got an update from Eileen Cipriani on that. And I'll double check with her again on when that closes and, and when, the award, uh, when the awards are announced, but hopefully we, we get that. Um, this legislation here is to provide a savings to the city. So within the backup, um, just let me get to it here. This company was actually the low bidder, $124,499. And the goal of the, the contract is to retrofit the lights in all the city buildings, which will provide between $115,000 and $130,000 in savings for each year for the city of Scranton. The one question I did have in looking this over was the initial cost of the contract is $124,499. So how are we paying for that? Out of what account are we paying for that? So we'll have further details on that, hopefully before the end of next week. If not, we'll table it. Um, and that's all I have. Anyone else on the question? Um, one more thing on the question. Um, mm -hmm. In caucus, Kevin, or Mr. Hayes, we did discuss um, the old retrofit, and, and you said you get a copy of that contract and forward it over to council. So if you can just get the old retrofit contract to send over to council, that'd be great. Thank you. Will do. Anyone else on the question? Yes, I'll also vote yes, only to introduce only because of process. I definitely want accurate disclosure information before I even consider voting any further. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? This time I'll entertain a, a um, or I'm sorry, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number 72 through 2021, an ordinance authorizing the sale and issuance of the city of Scranton's general obligation note, series of 2021, and direct the incurring of non-electoral debt through the issuance of a general obligation note of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, in the principal amount of $3,210,000 for the purpose of providing funds to finance the costs of the refunding of the city's outstanding general obligation note series of 2002 and the costs and expenses of issuing the note stating the purpose of the project directing the proper officers of the governing body to prepare certified and file the required debt statement and borrowing case certificate <coughs> covenanting that the city shall include the amount of annual debt service in its budget for each fiscal year, providing for a fully registered note, interest payment dates, provisions for redemption, and stated principal maturity amounts, and fixing the rate of interest on such note. Authorizing the proper officers of the city to contract with a bank or bank and trust company for its services as sinking fund depository, paying agent, and registrar and stating a covenant as to payment of principal and interest without deduction for certain taxes, providing for the registration, transfer, and exchange of note, providing for the execution, delivery, and authentication of note, and the disposition of the proceeds thereof, approving the form of the note, paying agents authentication certificate and assignment, awarding such note at negotiated sale and stating that such sale is in the best financial interest of the city, creating a sinking fund and appropriating annual amounts for the payment of debt service on the note, authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city 
to certify and to file with the Pennsylvania Department of Community and Economic Development certified copies of the necessary proceedings, covenanting that the proceeds of the note shall not be used in such a manner as to cause the note to be an arbitrage note <laughs> under federal tax law provisions, making certain representations under federal tax law provisions, approving the undertaking of certain continuing disclosure, authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city to do all things necessary to carry out the ordinance, authorizing and directing the proper officers of the city to pay issuance costs, repealing all inconsistent ordinances, providing for severability of provisions and stating the effective date. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? Mr. Chairman, I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? On the question, um, this is a no brainer for the city. The market conditions and the uh, the strength of, of the city's credit rating make this deal a good one uh, for the city of Scranton. I remember a few years ago where the, when the city's credit rating was it was terrible. Um, you probably could not get a deal like this. So over over the last few years, the city's credit rating is we're in much better condition. Um, the city's going to save nearly four hundred thousand dollars over the life of the note, and the interest rate is really good one point seven one zero percent. The other thing I want to mention that. I appreciate that the administration has done, and, and Councilman Schuster uh, and others brought this to light a few months ago with, with another deal, another financial deal, was the uh, bond council. So the city and the Cognetti administration um, received quotes, and I don't know that that was always done in the past. And they got the lowest price proposal from Dilworth Paxson, which was $13,000 plus expenses. Um, the, the deals I've seen in the past, they just, I, I don't know how they did it. They picked the law firm and, and that was it. And that's what we were stuck with. But they actually did get proposals this time, which is which is good. And that's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else on the question? I guess I'm, I'm happy to say the same thing. I know the last bond council was um, for $20,000. I put in a um, request for information on that that never really got answered, but um, still waiting on that. So it is nice to see that it was put out. Anyone else? And just to add quickly to that, I am happy that this is the last uh, variable rate loan on the city's books. Um, fixed rates are a lot more, a lot easier to budget for. Thank you. Anyone else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Public Works for adoption. File the council number 71, 2021 establishing a no parking zone designating the northerly side of Vine Street from the easterly curb line of Costello Court, 85 feet easterly on the northerly side of Vine Street and placement of the following signs. Three RA-3 no parking symbol signs, 12 inch by 12 inch. One with R-301 no parking left arrow plaque. One left arrow plaque one with R-301 no parking arrow plaque, and one with R-301 no parking right arrow plaque. What's, what is the recommendation of the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works? As the chairperson for the Committee on Public Works, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Schuster? Yes. Mr. McAndrew? Yes. Dr. Rothschild? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Donahue? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes, I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. Eighth order, old business, nothing at this time. There's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting's adjourned, thank you everyone.